Good morning and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. All school-age children are invited to go to the baptistry with Miss Shelley Burns for Sunday school. And please stand as you are able for the opening hymn, hymn 193, that Easter day with joy was bright. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first epistle of John the Evangelist. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, be in my head and in my heart and on my lips, that I may know you and love you and speak only your, love, your truth. Amen. Amen. I'm going to commit one of those preacher's sins and tell you a story I've told you before. The sound of a gunshot broke the near-perfect silence of the hushed, forest on either side of the cabin where we were sleeping. It came from very nearby, and then we heard voices, men, coming from the beach. Did they know we were here, tucked in our sleeping bags, only feet away? A close friend and I were showing an out-of-town guest the real Alaskan wild, staying in an off-grid forest service cabin on an outlying island roughly an hour excuse me, from our hometown when we were woken by those gunshots. Talk about real Alaska experience. We left the cabin making loud noises to alert the interlopers that people were in the vicinity and discovered a boat full of men searching the beach for a deer they'd only just fired upon from their craft. When they discovered our guest was a lawyer, no, not just any lawyer, a big shot lawyer from Washington, D.C., and recognizing they'd been illegally hunting from the water, and that they'd fired a gun roughly in the direction of three people hidden from view, safely tucked into the woods in a cabin, they offered us a salmon from their morning's catch as, as a gift. And then they beat a hasty retreat. I can still taste and remember the breakfast of that morning, the deliciousness of the coho salmon, grilled and salty, broiled over the coals and scented with cedar smoke. And I remember the feeling of relief and joy as we recounted to one another the disturbing experience of that morning, of our brush with danger, maybe even death, and as we relished the reality that we were safe and alive, that our hearts still pumped in our chests, and that our mouths could still taste. I remember, actually, many, many meals of grilled fish eaten out of doors and near the water. My wife Erin says that remembering meals is one of my superpowers. <laughs> if only I could deploy that sense of memory to, say, the unwritten grocery list I went to the store with. I can recall with great clarity the people with whom I ate, usually the dearest of friends or family, the wine, the sides, even the weather. There was the grilled whole fish at a beachside restaurant open to the air in Phuket, doused in luxurious green curry and buried under a mountain of fresh herbs, cilantro and basil eaten with my bride only four years into our marriage as we were backpacking across Thailand. There were the mesquite grilled camarones cooked at the surf shack of a dear friend and mentor that he had lent to us at sunset in Baja, Mexico, with the sound of the surf pounding hundreds of yards away. There was that thick halibut steak cooked in a fire pit in West Seattle on the beach overlooking Puget Sound with lifelong friends not long after college and before any of us had children, cold beers in hands and dumb jokes on our lips. I can remember with great precision 
the light at sunset for that meal and many more, the buzz of insects at one, the laughter of friends at another, the smell of smoke from the fire or the grill in each instance, and I can still taste the food. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> in today's gospel, Luke presents us with a snapshot, a memory of a resurrection appearance in a sequence of appearances, first on the road to Emmaus. As in the whole gospel, today's story includes food. If you recall the whole Emmaus Road story, Jesus has just appeared to the disciples walking on that road. They do not recognize him until he breaks bread with them at table. And then, as he often does in these resurrection appearances, he disappears from sight. In the next breath, the gospel tells us that filled with delight and joy, they rushed back to Jerusalem. And then this morning, we hear while they are talking about the whole experience, again, Jesus appears in their midst. He shows them his body, his, his hands, and his feet. He invites them to hold on to him. Presumably, as with Thomas, to allow them to see his wounds and to trust, as the gospel says, that he's not a ghost. And they give him a piece of grilled fish, and he eats it. You see, the Gospel of Luke bounces from table to table, meal to meal, and while the details are omitted this morning, I cannot help filling them in with my imagination. Were they finished eating, as is implied, still reclining at table but telling stories, reliving the experiences of the road to Emmaus, finishing the last glass of wine? Or was the meal in full swing? You can smell the smoke still from the fish if you try. Candlelight reflects off the slick oil, the slick olive oil in a bowl on the table. Uneaten bread is left broken on its plate. There is still wine at the bottom of cups. The sounds of the city drift through an open window as Jerusalem finds its resting place at evening. Why did Luke take such pains to include food at every turn in his gospel? Or perhaps more to the point, why did Jesus' ministry so often center on meals that that's what Luke could remember? I mean, clearly, hospitality, tending to the physical needs of others, feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, all of these were centerpieces of the faith of his people and the work he was calling others to continue. Yes to all of these, but these resurrection appearances that we've just heard seem less about hospitality or compassion and more about just the physical act of eating. It's as if Luke wants us to know that this Jesus is the same Jesus who died, who was buried for three whole days, and who has returned to his beloved community, changed, yes, and yet still somehow the same, wounded, but hungry, and yearning, yearning as we might, to be with his people. There is a profound and simple truth here that runs against the grain of so much religiosity in our world and even in our church that Jesus, the incarnate God, living among us, dying and being raised back to life in his body, grounds the actions of God. It centers them in this world, in creation, in the physical and sensual reality of life here in the flesh. In our faith forums this Easter tide and this morning, Dr. Mark McEnroy has been asking us to consider the idea of salvation. If Jesus lived and died and was raised for our salvation as we proclaim, what does that mean and for what are we being saved? The great Jesuit theologian and perhaps one of the most influential theological voices of the 20th century, Karl Rahner, once wrote, Caro Cardo Salutis, said one of the ancient fathers of the church with an untranslatable play on words. 
The flesh is the hinge of salvation. The reality beyond all the distress of sin and death, he says, is not up yonder. It has come down and it dwells in the innermost reality of our flesh. He was raised, not out of this world, but back to it, to center the location again of God's saving work, not out there, some ethereal other place, but in here and now, in our bodies and in the material world that we can see and touch and hold on to, and that we can taste. The saving work of Jesus, the resurrection of his body and ours, reinscribes meaning, purpose, and intention to the created order as the site and location of God's most important action. This life we live matters above and beyond all else. What seems to be a hidden spiritual reality is made plain in the resurrection. That this world, this life, these relationships which we share, the memories we make and the stories we create and then will tell and retell in joy and in sorrow, the love and the hospitality that we make manifest in the world shimmers, all of it, with the presence of God and is made divine. It is the deep divide that we have placed, particularly in the church and by the church, between the body and spiritual realities that has done the most damage to the world we've been called to serve, and which, by his resurrection, Jesus came to save. In her magnificent book, This Here Flesh, Spirituality, Liberation, and the Stories That Make Us, Cole Arthur Riley describes how this disconnect is at the root of racism and all manner of pain and injustice in the world. She writes, Our tales of Christian escapism lead us to the place where the physical is damned and the immaterial is gloried, where the only things, where the only holy things are invisible. How could you expect me, she says, to believe this when I've met a God who drank from the breast of creation. We were called to follow a God whose body, like ours, wept and ached and shivered and broke, but also a body that delighted in the joys of a friend's embrace, whose head swam and eyes watered and cheeks flushed at that first swallow of wine, who savored the taste of grilled fish and laughed from his belly at Simon Peter's bad puns. We ignore this reality to our peril. Holding these things to not only be true, but of the utmost importance, helps us to see the world through the eyes of a God who loves us so much that he came to be with us, who understood that spiritual realities are so deeply entwined with the physical that we cannot and will never disentangle them. We must seek the spiritual in and through the physical, at table together, as we march together, as we welcome strangers together, as we feed the hungry, as we push back together against hatred and bigotry in all its forms. It is no mistake that our faith centers a meal as the act through which we see and experience and make real over and over and over again the presence of God and God's saving work in the world. Here, here we share bread and wine, and recall Jesus' body and blood. And in this act, we recall every other meal, every other table or fire or grill over which food has been cooked and shared and savored. The bread which we break is food, yes, for the soul, 
But let us not forget that it is also food which nourishes our bodies. As Riley concludes, I've heard much of bodily sacrifice, she says, of taking up a cross, of dying and dying again, but I need to hear of resurrection, of the bodily love, of receiving the Eucharist. You want to tell me to love God? Ask me when I've eaten. Come now. You want, to tell, you want me to tell you a prayer? You'll find it in the blood beating from my heart to my head to my toes and back home again. Friends, this morning we are invited again to the table. So come, eat, taste again your salvation and that for which you have been saved. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal Lord, God, and Father of all God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. Let us pray for the church and for the world, responding here our prayer. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all our reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use the earth's resources rightly in the service of, the, of others and to your, to your honor and glory. We pray especially for our partnerships with First Nation Kitchen, Project Home, Kiroro Village, Uganda, Circle of the Beloved, the Farmer's Market, and Holly Q. Brown. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffered in body, mind, and spirit, and give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Judy, Stephen, Jill, Larissa, Pauline, Betty Jean, Micah, Rone, Fred, Chandra, Abby, Henry, Cindy, Ninoska, Ella, Sarah, Jeff, Edith, Elizabeth, Adele, Elizabeth, Joe, Dana, Michael, and Nora, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, all victims of violence, especially those harmed and killed in recent shootings, and those whose lives have been devastated by natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Join me in praying the collect for St. John's. Gracious God, by your love, Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Rising in body or in spirit, the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace, and to those worshiping with us online, please leave a word of peace in the YouTube chat. Please be seated. Good morning. Oh, come on now, people. Good morning. Hey, the church is alive. We have been raised. And we're awake. Dr. Judy Stack is away for the wedding of her daughter, and so we send our love and blessings to her and to the whole family. And you get me this morning. Sorry. My name is Jared. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the rector here. It's a privilege to welcome all of you. If you are a guest or a visitor with us today and would like to know more about the church, I'd be happy to speak with you in the narthex after the service or when I get out of the greeting line. If you want to grab me a coffee hour, that's fine too. There are just a couple of things that I want to highlight, but I encourage you to take the yellow insert home with you to read and mark and inwardly digest all of the wonderful things happening at St. John's. And when you're done there, go to the website and there's more to read. So. I encourage you to continue to come to our nine o'clock uh, forum series led by Dr. Mark McEnroy on the topic of salvation. It has been wonderfully edifying and rich and deep and will continue to be so. So continue to join us at nine o'clock. That's in the fireside room just down the hall. Another opportunity for faith formation is our Justice in Film series on each Wednesday night through Eastertide. And the next one is going to be on the topic of uh, my name is Polly Murray. You can watch that uh, on your own and then come for clips and discussion. And there's more information in the bulletin and on our website. So we encourage you to view and then join us for a really wonderful conversation. 
There is also an opportunity this Saturday, uh, excuse me, on Saturday the, the 20th from 9 a.m. to noon to find out more about an immigrant action team training. Even if you're just curious and not sure if you want to commit, that's a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the situation in our state and across the country for immigration and how St. John's can get more involved. If you'd like to know more, you can speak to Chelsea after the service or follow that QR code to sign up and um, we'd love to see you there. And then, of course, uh, there is an upcoming opportunity to celebrate the life and work that we share together in, with Give Us Wings. There's a, a little bulletin board at the back or a, a poster at the back to tell you more information. And if you follow the QR code, you can register and find out more and get tickets to join our partners Give Us Wings as we celebrate together the work that we're doing in Uganda. As, at St. John's, we follow the way of Jesus by helping our neighbors in need. In 2023, we were able to provide over 13,000 for the work of social and climate justice. And before I let it go, one other announcement, and that is come back at 2.30 for the Section Leaders concert here in this space and on YouTube. It proves to be, or will prove to be a wonderful time of fellowship and of beautiful music. I hope you'll join us for that. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord. Thy own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of all the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, 
constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lives in each of you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.